Hey everybody, it is Brooke. Uh, just coming in a little bit early before the episode starts. Uh, we want we wanted to make a couple changes to the episode, um, and I want to warn you guys. I do tell a story at the end of this episode about a short film I was in. We've kind of prepped it in uh, a previous episode, and uh, I I do love this story. Um, but in in thinking about it after the fact, we we kind of remembered what the internet is like, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and be bleeping his name, um, and, you know, we're gonna try and do as much legwork as possible to make, make it so that it's hard to find the actual <laughs> short film, and I know in the episode it's gonna sound like we're encouraging you to find it. Please don't, um, and if you do happen across it, please don't, like, make it a thing. Of all the episodes that we have, I really want this one to not go viral, uh, and, and don't be mean to him. It was his first shot at a short film, and, uh, and everybody, everybody sucks when they start. Um, yeah, just don't be mean. Be cool. Uh, enjoy the story, though, because I think it's fucking hilarious. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's all I got for you. Okay, enjoy the episode. We're gonna talk about, well, you'll see. All right. Whatever. What keeps you awake at Bye. night? Sea levels are rising globally. Fears fueled by horror stories. Among the worst flu season in a decade, and it hasn't peaked yet. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Another series of deadly terror attacks. Because you know that thing your brain does in the middle of the night? This crazy thing where it takes a small problem and it just makes it enormous? Uh, I guess you and I have both had a pretty shit week this week, huh? Uh, I mean, the weekend was, I think, the thing okay, that the... really sealed it for me. Yeah, I... have I... been <laughs> laid up completely with a stomach flu for the last three days, and I was convinced I had Giardia. Um, utterly convinced that I had somehow contracted it from my cat, which is, <laughs> ha almost impossible. <laughs> so, there's that. Yeah. I, on the other hand, have been studying for a standardized test, and it'd be really funny because I turn off my phone on airplane mode, like, I'm going to say like a good 80% of the day because I have absolutely no self-control whatsoever. <laughs> so all of my electronics are firewalled, and everything that I could communicate with people with is uninstalled. Holy shit. I Because I have, again... No, no self control. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like I'll walk in maybe every two hours and like check updates on my phone as like a like separate from the fog and it would be like, <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I'm feeling not so great. I think I got the stomach flu oh, God. time elapses. <laughs> so um do you think I got Giardia for my cats? And I'm like, Hey, uh is that common? And you're like, no, I Googled it. It's not. <laughs> like, I would get, like, the blips of updates. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. It was, was so like, good. Olivia, what if I have the flu? What if I didn't get my flu shot in time? And you were like, do you have respiratory symptoms? And I was like, no. You were like, like, it's probably not the flu then. And then it disappeared. <laughs> and then, like, I went through 12 more iterations of what I thought I had. And you were like, dude, it's probably just a stomach bug. And I was like, No! Also, I'm dying, god damn I think it. I, I have sent fucking you... meningitis. <laughs> I, th I think I sent you, I think it's just the stomach bug after you've already concluded that it was the stomach bug. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, I think it's probably just the stomach bug. And you're like, yep, sure figured is. that out yeah. on my own Google yeah, search. I think, I think about the time that the diarrhea started. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not the fine. flu. Yeah. Well, I'm and not then, fine. <laughs> not fine, but decidedly not dying of meningitis. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That would be rough, huh? Yeah, I had a friend that had meningitis. My mother had meningitis. Woof! How bad? Okay, so did you get viral or bacterial? Uh, viral, because Ooh. it didn't kill her. So. Well, no, bacterial is the one you can treat. No, other Isn't way around. It? Well, so... You can treat bacterial meningitis, but it's much more aggressive. Uh, mm. Bacterial meningitis is what Jim Henson died of. Fun fact. Oh. Oh. Not so fun fact, I guess. It's it's a huge bummer. Anyway, meningitis. Um. This is a weird <laughs> energy to start the show with. <laughs> well, okay. You know, it's funny when I went to uh, when, like when I went to college. I guess I got the meningitis vaccine when I was a youth, yeah. but I got the wrong brand, which oh. I have a whole fucking 
whatever. And so I went in to like get it, you know, fixed. I was like, yeah, just give me the other one. I have literally zero issues with vaccinations. So I it walked in before I transferred and I was like, give me literally whatever you want me to take. I, I don't give a shit. And she's like, okay, well, it seems like you're due for the flu shot. I'm like, that's great. Get me the flu shot. And she's like, and we're going to need your men meningitis thing checked. Do you want the meningitis um, support shot? And I was like, what is that? And she's like, well, it does have a couple strains that... Um, are not as common, but uh, we offer it available if you would like to have that as well. And I was like, well, like, is it, are they like super not common or, and she went, they're not very common, but the effects can be devastating. Oh, I'm like, okay. okay. Uh, so I guess just add that. <laughs> one meningitis shot, please. Thank so I you. had three vaccinations in one day and then drove to LA because I had to do something. I think I had to pick up something or something. And on my hour and a half in, I was like, damn, three vaccines in a day is actually my limit. Yeah, that's that was too very, much. It was very spinny. Um, yeah. Wow. Anyway, what were we talking about? We're actually not talking about this at all today. We're talking about actors. That's that's reductive, and I don't want to start this way. I don't want to start by, like, alienating an entire subset of people. It, we, we're not talking about actors. We're talking about our... Actors. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we both, Olivia and I both have some fair experience with theater. Um, mm -hmm. I, myself, as you perhaps know, went to college briefly for theater. Uh, and then I stopped going to college for <laughs> theater. And Olivia went to OSHA. And if you don't know what that is, Olivia, if you please. Uh, OSHA is a conservatory high school. So what that meant is that... Let me fucking... <laughs> I'm going to walk you through my fucking timeline. So I lived and grew up, born and raised in uh, Dana Point. Um, so I could have gone to Dana Hills High School. <laughs> Which is a it's, a, it's a beach city in South Orange County, just yeah. for everyone who doesn't okay. live in South Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, and so then I got into OSHA, which is a conservatory high school at one hour north of where I lived. So I would have to get up at six to either get on the train or start driving by about 6.45, 7 to get to school in time, to go to class from 8 to 1.30. That was our academic time. And then we'd have a break and then we'd be in our conservatory arts classes from about, if I remember... We'd break at one thirty, so about two two fifteen to five to six p.m. God. So then I got home at seven or eight. So I was easily having like twelve hour days, and then of course I'd get home, and it was like wildly academically competitive. Like when I graduated, if I remember correctly, there were five or six people that had five point Jesus. So like I'd come home and then I'd do homework until one in the morning and then go to sleep and do it all again. <laughs> and you did it for four years. I did it for four whole ass years. Four years. Why? That's Why? insane. Um, my first two years there, I did a conservatory program called integrated arts where I did Drawing, painting, writing, Where dancing. You sang, uh, I sing the body electric. Did during, I? You did. It was the only thing of yours I ever saw where you guys came out and sang like just, <laughs> just the the light in your eyes was gone <laughs> as you sang I sing the body electric. Was, I don't even know what that is even from. Fame. I'll be honest with you. It's from Fame. Is it? And a show in the eighties. It's insanity. I don't anyway. understand. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then I switched to culinary arts, which was its own dumpster fire. Yeah, um, talked a little bit about it. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's so funny that you told me that because I forgot that performance at all. The only thing that I remember about that performance <laughs> is that um, I was in one of those like five, four chord songs and I sang one of the parts of the song. <laughs> I don't know. It's as specific as we're going to get because I sang one of the parts. <laughs> Are you on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a job interview and they were like, what's
what's your previous experience? And I was like, oh, you know, I worked at uh, in and out And they're like, what, did you, what were you responsible for? And I'm like, customer service. <laughs> <gasps> oh, interacting crying. with food oh my god <laughs> anyway so this whole episode's about our experience in like arts and stuff right, like that yeah. and like it's so funny you said let's do this and the whole reason we're doing this I'll be honest is because Brooke has like literally one of my favorite stories <laughs> on the face of the planet that she's going to be telling today Lovely and so just wants to hear it again <laughs> I, oh I love it I, I, you, the first time you told this to me I, I think I was crying I was laughing yeah. so hard <laughs> I mentioned this in the last episode that, like, we had been sort of disconnected for maybe four years where, when we went to high school because, you know, she was up north and I was in San Juan Capistrano and we just, like, didn't talk. So in college, we reconnected and this was one of the first things that I decided to tell her about <laughs> for God knows what reason. Were we at Chipotle when we you were told at Chipotle, me this? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> it was our first meeting. I also recommended to you to watch like last podcast on the left, which was yeah. such a fucking risk. Yeah, it Ooh. really was. You, and I remember when you told me, you were like, now I'm going to warn you. It's a little, uh, <laughs> intense. <laughs> And you're like, I can handle that. And then you listen to it and you're like, <laughs> The fucking oh. Toy Box Killer episode. And I was like, ah, I see. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you know, it's yeah. funny. As I was as I was trying to bring back these memories, I realized how much of my high school career I have actually just completely blocked out. <laughs> um, oh, no. Because I messaged Milan, who went to school with me. She's a listener, and she was also in Integrated with me, and she actually gave me some stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I was like, hey, uh, question, do you remember anything? <laughs> because I don't. And she's like, well, there was that time when X. And I went, are you sure? She's like, yeah. And I was like, are you like 100% sure? And she's like, Olivia, that's like one of my most like memorable like moments with you. And I'm like, hmm, don't remember uh -oh. that at all. Or like people would be like, do you remember when we took that class? And I'm like, I took, um, I took that class, and they're like, yeah, the teacher loved you. And I'm like, "Good to know." I just don't, it doesn't ring a bell. No functioning um, memory of that at all. Yeah, not cool. even, like, br bringing it back to me as people remind me. Oh, I'm like, man. Mm, I just don't think that that was me. And they're like, it, what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You also just like, had kind of an experience in high school. You know? uh, it was a different yeah, world for you. I was on You're lithium listening. in high school. I'm shocked I remember any of it. Yeah, that's fair. Well, um, and you'll what you tell me stories from middle school. They're like you're like, wow. Do you remember that one time? <laughs> this one memory that literally has stuck with me my entire life. And I went, I don't remember that at all. And you're like, Olivia, it's like when I think of you, that's like the first thing I think of when I think of middle school. And I'm like, are you sure that that was me though? Honestly, these days, one of the, the only things I remember about middle school and you is you coming to, to school in full watermelon face paint and <laughs> thinking, unironically, that that was the coolest thing that I had ever seen. You know what? I remember poking you directly in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> I unrelentingly, I, l I looked at her, and she looked at me with full trust, and I just, <laughs> I just poked her directly in the eye, and you know why I remember that? <laughs> I heard your eye squish. <laughs> no. Imagine this from my perspective, dear listeners of ours. I look Holy at shit. my friend, who is just sitting quietly next to me. And I see her kind of squint just a little and then raise her hand and in one, not, not a fast, like, jabbing motion, in a slow, controlled, and purposeful movement, just insert her finger into my eye. Why didn't I move? Oh my god, I'm sobbing. I'm crying. Oh my god. It anyway, was that was in weird. theater class too. It that was. was. That was <laughs> in Patricia Pat Banning's, Banning's theater <laughs> class. When I, I don't think I think that was seventh grade because mm. no it eighth had, grade I played be. Belle in Beauty and the Beast and wore duct tape bracelets. You did, and and you refused to take them <sighs> off, which is just iconic. I still have those pictures. Good. <laughs> yeah. You also played like 
the queen or something in a weird rendition of Robin Hood. Yeah. In which oh my I god. Was forced to have a lisp, and it was uh, really good. My I, favorite. <laughs> my favorite part of that is I had forgotten my lines on one of the really important scenes. And instead of, like, rolling with it, it was one of those, you're like, man, I don't even remotely remember what this scene was about. And so I just staged me walking off early. Oh, my God. (laughs) Because I legitimately, I was like, I don't... Let's just skip to the part where I'm not in here. And I was like, I'm outraged and left. And I remember everyone on stage was like, What the fuck is this? It's middle school, so everybody just stands there and shuffles their feet and hopes that no one notices. Oh, man. Anyway, Uh, these aren't the stories that we're going to be telling. This was just a reminiscence. Apparently they are. Um, Yeah. I wanted to start with maybe, how did you first get into theater? Uh, To get attention. I'm not Oh my god, same! I'm so starved for attention. What a fucking shocker! No, I was in I was in first grade and we had this thing, I guess, where my best understanding of it, because I was in fact a first grader, uh, (laughs) is that we would come to class and then we would learn and stuff, and then in the last ten minutes before the bell rang to go home, we would clean up and then one person who, like, volunteered, would share something with the class while everybody else cleaned up. I don't know how the little stinker that, like, just (laughs) stood there and talked got that job, but I was actually among these lucky golden few. Um, And my decision, which mortifies me now, who the (laughs) hell was this child, decided to sing Once Upon a December from Anastasia. Oh, my God. She's got guts. Uh, I'll give her that. I can't even sing that. Right? Holy shit. And Olivia, by the way, has an incredible singing voice. I'm just not a soprano, so that's way out of my scope of range. Mind you, I was like seven. That's like a soprano. (laughs) Yeah, I was seven, so I could pull that shit off. And it was apparently enough for the teacher of that class to approach the theater department, whatever it involved, I have no idea, it was an elementary school, and tell them that, like, hey, I have this girl who sang. Do you want her to audition for your rendition of fucking Alice in Wonderland. Hey! And and they did. Uh, And they asked me to sing Happy Birthday, and this is one of the most In Alice in Wonderland? No. Oh, no, it's your audition. Come on. Uh, (laughs) Keep up, Olivia. I'm like, wow, that's a really weird stage production of Alice in Wonderland, but all right. It was a weird production of Alice in Wonderland. Um, And to this day, I can find maybe one trace of, like, it existing on the internet. It is one of those things where, like, if you try to find it, you just come up empty-handed because no one did it. So, yeah, they had me sing Happy Birthday, and this is one of the most vivid memories of probably my young life where I tried to sing Happy Birthday because I was super nervous, and my voice cracked so thoroughly that they they immediately were like, okay, thanks. Oh, no! <laughs> but I still was cast as Tweedledee, which uh, that set me on the path of... <laughs> The garden pa- path to hell, as they say, um, into the performing arts, which I never, ever, ever stopped doing after that. Until you did. Until I did. <laughs> which was the best <laughs> decision I ever made. That's a fucking mood. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's what it was for me. What was it for you? So uh, my parents were both working parents, and they worked from home. So they essentially had to find ways to like put me <laughs> somewhere. They were like, we need. You know, when my I was a baby, baby, my dad said he would put the laundry basket in the bathtub and then put me in the laundry basket because he's like, then I knew you wouldn't drown and you were in one confined space. Olivia, babies can drown in two inches of water. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, I was probably time. a toddler. Um, <laughs> so my, I think they put me in ballet first. Um, okay. Did I ever tell you this? I don't think so. No. Well, I was in ballet and I did a recital, and uh, apparently the curtain closed, and I rushed out, but in front of the curtain <laughs> and started bowing. In front of an auditorium of people and said, thank you all for coming. That's so fucking cute. (laughs) And then they had to pull me off. Um, And so that was when I was like, I don't know, four, five or something like that. Um, 
And then I think they put me in theater because it was like during the day. I did like theater classes during the summer, shit like that. I did uh, three different Shakespeare plays, I think. They were like modified kids plays. So it was like, it was, it was essentially like, we need a place to put her, put her in theater. And I loved attention. Um, and if I recall when I was younger, when my parents would take me to like wishing wells or fountains or whatever, yeah. uh, I'd made a wish. My dad said, what did you wish for? And I went, I wished for a TV show. And he was like, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yes. This is definitely normal. Um, uh, and so I guess I got a podcast. So, hey. Yeah, close enough. Um, it's the TV show of the modern world. Um. And so then, you know, I did it in middle school, and I was Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Um, I believe I was something else in Annie, because uh, I am not within the range of any of the characters, which so such sucks Did ass. Miss like, Hannigan? I think I you were. were. No, I wasn't Miss Hannigan. I wanted to be Miss Hannigan. I think it was just an orphan. That's oh. a move. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think what it was is I had auditioned for Annie, but because I was, well, not as Annie, I, that was definitely right, yeah. not in my range. Um, she doesn't have and, a range. <laughs> what am I? I'm not a soprano. What's below a soprano? It's been years. Yeah, I think or I'm an alto. alto. I'm probably an alto. Um, cool. and so like I could, I literally zero middle school productions were for my voice. Sure. Um, of course not. Cause people would be like, nah! and I was like, mm-hmm. And I'm going to start low. <laughs> Can we, like, lower this by two octaves? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so then when I went to OSHA, when I went to Integrated, it was great because I got to do acting and singing and writing and blah, 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 blah. Right. So that's my whole trajectory, my trajectory to hell. And I uh, got off the ride, proverbially speaking, <laughs> uh, my junior year of high school, and that's when I went to culinary arts. So no more performing for Which me. Which ruined your life. <laughs> Good. Recently, you're fine now, I'm sure. No residual trauma there at all. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, what made you, uh, I don't know, I guess you've talked about it. What made you decide to stop acting? Because we could talk about that. So I I did theater in college for two years. Um, the thing that made me switch my major was twofold. First, I I realized that it was much easier to market an English major than it was a drama major, which sounds like kind of... You know how you say, like, apples and oranges? It's like oranges and tangerines. (laughs) Yeah, it's easier to market an English degree. All right. But, like, where's the bar, Brooke? So so I I switched into English because I'm good at it. And, uh, And then... I continued doing theater my junior year of college, like, just doing the shows and stuff. Um, and and in that time, I was also trying to, like, build up a film reel because what I really wanted to do was, like, screen acting. That was something that I felt like I, I connected with. Um, and I... It was a, a collection of things that made me realize that I am not compatible with the business. First of all, rejection shatters me. Uh, and this industry is all rejection that's all it is Uh, and i'm not particularly striking to look at so i'm not saying i'm not saying that in a way that makes like i'm not saying i think i'm ugly like i don't i think that i'm generally an all right looking person but like when you put me in front of a camera and try to take a headshot of me it's like I don't know, my head's kind of round, and, like, <laughs> oh, my hair's kind of thin. And then you, like, see some of the other people who take headshots and then pay, like, $500 to have them retouched, which I do not have. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I, I really don't have I don't have a shot here. Um, but I did actually do some short films and stuff, and, and in the process of doing that, I started working as a background actor, and one of the one of the formative experiences as a background actor that I had I was on set in San Bernardino in June, uh, and for anybody who doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about, San Bernardino is essentially a desert, and, like, all of California is a desert, but, like, it is a desert in the classic sense. Yeah, it's like a tumbleweed rolling around. The tumbleweed is trying to rehydrate, (laughs) like, it's hot. 